I am Melissa Lopez, and for my Renaissance project, I decided I wanted to create a fashion book displaying various styles and classes in the Renaissance era. I chose to do this project because I thought it would be an entertaining way to learn and teach information about clothing during this time period. I created a title page to start off the book, and I followed it with a table of contents to help me and the reader stay organized. Each page in the book took me about an hour to complete, including the time I took researching the different styles, so in total it took me roughly eight to nine hours. The first informational page I made was about the common colors used during the Renaissance. Often used in the clothing were bright and deep reds, blues, deep pinks, dark greens, beiges, and browns. I used a variety of materials for this project because it was a lot like scrapbooking, so I used whatever I thought would look best on the page. In this clip, I am working on the page with information about lower-class women's clothing. Low-class women often opted for looser and more practical clothing because of their daily schedule and their income. Their dresses were made out of linen, which was a lighter, airier fabric, because it was cheap and they would wear looser corsets, if any. I wanted to add as many unique and creative elements to the book as possible to give it some texture and difference, and I achieved this by using materials such as colored construction paper, string, felt, lace, and ribbon. I also worked with colored pencils, fine sharpies, highlighters, glue sticks, a hot glue gun, and scissors to bring the fashion book all together. Here I am making the page for high class women's fashion, and I added a piece of construction paper to create a miniature book to showcase a drawing of what the dresses looked like. These more regal dresses had tight-fitting bodices with fuller skirts that hang down to their ankles. Dresses were cut to reveal their neckline because it was very fashionable during this time, and the fabrics used for the dress were usually heavier with more intricate designs and ruffles added to the sleeves. The next section I made was for the men's clothing. Here I am making the pages for what the lower and higher class men wore. Both classes wore wide and billowy shirts with an open neckline, but the lower class men's were made out of flannel or another cheap fabric. Higher and lower class would either wear trues, which were a looser pant fastened with the button at the top, or hose, which were tighter and like leggings. The higher class men liked to elevate their fashion like the women by adding jewels, puffy sleeves, ruffles, and luxurious designs. Over top of their shirts, men would layer a doublet, which is a tight-fitted piece of clothing that is about waist length. Over the doublet, they layered a jerkin, which was quite similar to the doublet, but it was short and laced up in the front. A unique element in Renaissance fashion I wanted to learn about was the hairstyles that were worn. Women's hairstyles were very extravagant and had a lot of detail among the rich. One of the most common was having slicked back braids coiled around the ears. They would cover the braids with jewels, gems, pearls, hairnets, snoods, or a fashionable hood. The most popular trend for the hair was to have it extremely slicked back because foreheads were very beautiful and attractive in this time period. Here are a few examples of some of the different things that women did with their hair. This is an example of a hairstyle relatively close to what we see Juliet wear in the first scene we see her in the play. Men also followed trends when styling and cutting their hair that are very different from the style now. Most men wore a bob haircut with bangs. On their heads they would wear berets, which could be trimmed with feathers and jewels if they were of higher class. Another common hat worn was a bonnet, which were brimless caps made of felt or velvet that pinched in at four corners. Women in the Renaissance era had a lot of beauty standards to follow while having their makeup done. Pale skin was one of them, and they had to achieve this, they used white powders made from white lead, mercury, and vermilion. They also used vermilion on their lips, which could be tinted to look natural or red. An interesting beauty hack was that the women put leeches on their ears to bring blood to their ears and cheeks to create the desired rosy looks. Overall, this project was a very fun way to learn about how people dressed in the Renaissance and why. I really enjoyed piecing together the fashion book because I had the opportunity to to be creative in my designs and present the information in a visual appealing way.